It's the sacred place where you hang out in your pajamas and binge watch TV shows. Doesn't it deserve better? This is 25 cheap and easy DIYs that will vastly improve your home by Peggy Wang. One, create wainscoting by buying frames from a craft store and painting them to mesh the wall. Okay, so here is the fun part. This idea allows you to install wainscoting without power tools, and it requires a latex-based paint instead of oil-based paint. Find a reason on charmingzebra.com. Two, regrout that shower. You will live your best life with a moldless shower. Directions, remove all the caulking. Bring the shop back into the bathroom to suck up the bits of caulking and grout dust. After that, go over the gaps where mildew had been with the solution of bleach water and a stiff brush. You could also use vinegar too. Next up, use Spectralock grout and some color. Amazon it. Everything. After that, make some mess with that stuff. Get some cheapy glove or mask if you have to. Clean it and wait a few days to get your mix dried and hardened. Last, caulk it. This video teaches you how to caulk properly if you've never done it before. Oh, and make sure you're using caulk specific for a shower or tub. You want something that can withstand the water. Result. Oh, hey, look, it's no mildew. How awesome is that? Three, use peel and stick tiles to cover up a leaked on cabinet bottom. When the floor of your sink cabinet needs a spruce up, lay down squares of self adhesive vinyl tile. They're about a buck a square at home centers and provide an easy to wipe clean surface. Four, give your living room sofa a little perk by restuffing the cushions. This chair was looking really sad, but after about $35 worth of supplies and less than an hour of my time, I have a chair that looks like new. This chair is less than a year old, but the stuffing hasn't held up well, and it makes it look worn and tired. Here's the tip. I removed the cushion and discovered the fill had separated, so I cut a small slit in the cushion to add more, then sewed it back up. The additional polyfill gave the cushion back its lift. I then cut the shape of the cushion out of 2-inch foam and added batting to it, then put that inside of the cushion cover to provide support for the shape. This way, the cushion can't sag. Five, hang mugs and teacups on hooks. Do you have a mug or tea collection threatening to overwhelm your interior cabinet space? Take a cue from these photos and hang them on hooks instead. This look is particularly fetching with brightly colored mugs or teacups, but simple white has a charm all its own. Six, coat your new kitchen countertop to look like an expensive stone. Step one, prepare the surface with the diamond embedded sanding tool included. Step two, apply the countertop transformations adhesive base coat. Step three, spread the decorative color chips. Step four, sand and smooth. And step five, apply the countertop transformations protective top coat. Number seven, turn your cheap dining room table into something straight out of a restoration hardware catalog. First, she used a couple cans of leftover fat paint chalk paint mixed together to come up with her table color. No sand or prime, just all painted on. All of the boards purchased in one bundle from Rona, Canada's home improvement store, for six bucks. The wood top is nailed. Eight, make new curtain rods out of copper pipes and fittings. Simply take any measurement you need and cut accordingly. 
More info provided by The Handmade Home. 9. Replace your boring air grill with sheet metal you can buy at a hardware store. Always wondered what those sheets of metal with the cool designs on them were for? Now you know. Directions. I held the metal up to the intake and used my best judgment to cut the sheet using the tin snips pictured above. Next, I cut two long narrow strips to cover the space. Once the metal had the right size, I took it out to the garage to prime and paint it, the same color as our baseboards. To paint the metal, I used a 6-inch foam roller and laid the metal directly on the construction paper on the floor. 10. Hide your knife rack under the cabinet. Suitable for tiny kitchens with tons of amenities. 1. I invented it, simply standing at the stove, new knife in hand, without the assistance of Mr. Google. 2. The slim profile of the magnetic strip takes up much less room than the bulky wooden under cabinet knife block. It bears repeating, 64 square feet. All space is at a premium. 3. Because it is so slim, the knife rack disappears when the cabinet is shut. You would never see it unless you knew it was there. 4. It was a snap to install. Well, if you have a handy husband with a drill, that is. 5. When we eventually move on to some other tiny kitchen, it is flexible for wall or under cabinet use. So there you have it, under cabinet magnetic knife rack. I am in love with mine. 11. Use kitchen cabinets and IKEA butcher block countertops to fake the look of built-ins. Do I need to paint the inside of the cabinets no one but me will ever see? I mean, obviously I have no life. <laughs> No, but there's something to be said for having an organized space look pretty too. I simply taped them off and did one coat of color I used on the backs of the built-ins. I had to do one coat each too, which totally surprised me. The paint is the SW Duration kind and it covered great. After it was dry, I did a super quick purge and then loaded everything back in. I have a cabinet for the holiday stuff. 12. Turn your blinds into Roman shades. First, measure your window. Second, release your mini blind and sprawl them on your floor. Third, cut away the thin ladder-like strings. But don't cut that thick one. That is the cord that raises and lowers the blinds. You will need that. Fourth, use a small screwdriver and pop off the plug on the bottom piece of the blinds. Fifth, slide off all the slats, except for the ones you need for your folds. Sixth, cut your black outliner to the exact size of your window. Then cut out a print fabric one and one half inches larger on all sides. Iron and print fabric, and then place it print side face down and the black outliner on top. Use your Fabri Tac glue to glue the edges of the print fabric onto the black outliner. Seven, place the remainder of the mini blind on top of the glued fabric, placing the top at the top of the fabric. Glue the mini blind top onto the blackout shade, making sure you do not glue the pull up cord of the blinds. Eight. Measure out where your slats will be on your fabric and glue the concave side of the slat, the side with the most surface area, onto the shade. Make sure you do not get any glue on the pull-up cord. Ninth, now take the end of the pull-up cord and reinsert it in the hole on the base of the shade. Retie a knot at the end of the string and pull the plug back in. Glue down the base of the shade at the bottom of the fabric. 10, and your new shade is done. That's all for now. If you want to get new home decor ideas sent directly to your favorite email, press the subscribe button under this video. Before you go, leave this video with your lovely comment, share, or like. Thanks for watching and see you again soon.